as much as we need to pray. For example, Moses fasted at least two recorded 40-day periods. Jesus fasted 40 days and reminded his followers to fast. When you fast, he said, when you fast. He didn't say, if you fast. He said, when you fast. In Exodus 14, 29, Moses fast. In 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 8, Elijah fast. We'll go over these briefly in a few minutes. Hannah fasted in 1 Samuel 1, 7. And then, of course, the also... And the, the one of the best times that people fasted was at the Day of Atonement. And uh, we'll look at just a few moments at 24-hour fasting, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29. Fasting and prayer can restore, there's some reasons why fasting is good. Fasting and prayer can restore the loss of your first love for your Lord, and the result is a more intimate fellowship with Christ. Someone says, well, how can I have a closer fellowship with the Lord? How can I get closer to the one of the means whereby God has that to happen to us is through prayer, but also through fasting. Number four, fasting is biblical, is a biblical way to truly humble yourself in the sight of God. Look at Psalms chapter Psalms chapter 35 and verse 13. Psalms 35, verse 13. I have it underlined. You know, I mean, I have it colored. Psalms 35, verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with what? How did he humble him? How did he humble him? How did he humble his soul? With fasting. With fasting. And my prayer returned into my own bosom. When apparently from this verse, he was having trouble praying. He didn't have the the desire to pray. He he kind of felt that. It was a strain to come to God in prayer. But when he humbled himself through fasting and fasted, and fasting has more to do than just... We, it, fasting has a lot more than just not eating. Right. But fasting humbles yourself, and then it opened up his heart where he could pray. And I think that's pretty interesting. That when you had trouble praying, and people say, I have trouble praying... And it could be that there are some things in our lives that need to be cleaned out and our minds need to be refreshed and oftentimes that is done through prayer. Number four, David, oh yeah, David said, I humble myself through prayer. Number five, fasting enables the Holy Spirit to reveal your true spiritual condition. And sometimes that's what's needed. Instead of covering it up, we neglect it, and it says that the result is brokenness, repentance, and a transformed life. On our computers, we have that little button that says refresh. And as things, go, as things get messed up, there's that button you push and it redoes it all over again. If something doesn't come up on the screen very well, you push refresh and it just it just boots up the the, the website all over again. And I think occasionally that we need to be rebooted. Good idea. We need to be rebooted. We need refreshed. And one way we refresh ourselves is to clear our system of a lot of things that we probably don't need to be in there and it also clears out our system but it also helps us to spend more time with the Lord. Number six, the Holy Spirit will quicken the Word of God in our hearts. 
and the truth will become more meaningful to you. You know, we're reading the Bible. We're reading the Bible, and it's all it's done. It's Dolesville. Now, if it happens that the Bible is Dolesville, there is a spiritual condition that you've gone into that you should not ignore. You shouldn't be... I mean, I think all of us do yeah. from time to time. And if you, and, and if it's interesting, sometimes people at the first sign of something wrong with them physically, guess where they're going to go to urgent care? They're going to have to take me by ambulance before I go to urgent care. I'm just, I just, I'm not going. And I know one time my Kyle, Chad, a young boy was swinging him and hit him on the, dropped him on the steps. He'll be okay. Took 14 stitches to, uh, you know, to close him up. So there are some occasions that you got to use common sense. Yeah. But we go to urgent care at the first sign of some problem that we have, and that's not always bad. Why well, wait till you got pneumonia and then you die from it? I, I don't disagree with that, but my comment is, <clears throat> why then don't, why do we wait so long with our spiritual condition? Because we think we can take care of our thoughts. And oh, that attitude, you know, well, I right. can take care of this. Right. Are we ignore it? Are we don't think it's near as bad as it is? And we wait till it really gets bad, and then we really are in bad shape. But fasting is a means that God uses so that the Holy Spirit can help transform our lives and make the Word come out more clearly. You know, if you are physically not into it, if you're physically hurting, if you're physically uh, bogged down, if you're physically tired, if you're physically burdened down, and you go to the scriptures, it's going to be Dullesville. It's just not going to be there. But if you fast and, and refresh your body and then go into the Word, it gives more delight than what you already have. Number seven, fasting can transform your prayer life into a richer and more personal experience. Number eight, fasting can result in a dynamic, personal revival in your own life and make you a channel of revival to others. Wouldn't that be nice? To be refreshed when we come to church. Refreshed in our spirit. Refreshed and wanting to hear what's been said. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, it's not, you know, there is... It, are you sick? Some people walk, are you sick? I mean, are you sick tonight? You're, you're acting awful sick. And I mean, you know, we say that to people. <clears throat> but how often do we say to people... You know, you, you sort of uh, kind of spiritually sick, aren't you? I mean, I mean, you know, are you taking anything for it? I mean, it just don't seem like you're into it. It doesn't seem like that that you can find any reason not to be here, any reason for whatever it is, and and that could be true. I have a prescription for that, and that would, and I'm going to write out a prescription. I think I should start doing that. You think that would be good to write out a prescription? Yeah. Fast. Yeah, right. We'd start calling. Maybe you I should do that. We'd have to start calling you doctor. Call me doctor. Call me doctor. Call me doctor. Charles. Yeah. Take a fast, Charles. Right. <laughs> Number nine. Fasting and prayer are the only disciplines that fulfill the requirements of 2 Chronicles 7.14 that we just finished reading. Fasting and prayer are the only disciplines that fulfill the requirement of 2 Chronicles 7.14. Prayer and fasting.